These are the top five entry-level GRC jobs in cybersecurity. Jumping right in, number one on this list is a compliance analyst, which is essentially one of the OG GRC analyst roles. A compliance analyst is someone who makes sure that the company or the organization is compliant with certain internal policies, external industry regulations, as well as any other regulatory requirements. They may also be the one leading internal and external audits, reviewing whether processes are efficient and aligned with certain security frameworks and standards and ensuring that everything is documented and logged properly for compliance or auditory needs. Now, this role is going to look very different depending on the company you work for. For example, if you work in a smaller company that has a software service, or if you work for a larger company that is a bank. So these two companies and everything in between are going to have very different regulations that they have to follow, as well as different auditory requirements. One company has their ISO 27001, which is a very popular security certification to go through that provides a solid security framework for companies to follow. They're going to be dealing with a different set of standards compared to a bank, which may be going through PCI, which is a much more rigorous standard made specifically for the finance industry. And even more specifically, anything that has to do with transmitting credit card data. Now, of course, there are overlaps in different security standards. This is another reason why GRC is such a big field because a compliance analyst in the healthcare space is going to be focusing on very different standards compared to the banking space, which makes sense since you're comparing health data with credit card data. Both are very important, but both are also used in very different ways. And as a compliance analyst, your job is to know about these various different standards for the sector that you're in. Obviously you can jump around, but typically for someone just starting out, I would learn about the most common and most popular security standards and security frameworks, but I would also figure out which one is the most interesting to you so that it aligns with the actual work that you're interested in doing. As a compliance analyst, you could be leading audits, but you could also be directly contributing to an ongoing audit. For example, if an external auditor comes in and they're auditing you for the ISO 27001 standards, they may be asking you to bring in the key players, the SMEs from various different teams to be able to get them the information that they need to check whether or not your security program is compliant against ISO 27001. This is a very long drawn out process. It could take months for an audit. I've heard of audits that can go on for even up to a year. So it highly depends on the company, the evidence that you're bringing, how much more your security program is at the company, as well as just how easy it is to get other teams on board. Because believe it or not, almost every team has a play in the passing of a security audit, including sales, marketing, legal, even though GRC and auditing is technically under the cybersecurity umbrella, but it is still very much a team effort from the entire company, which is another reason why you need buy-in from executives, senior leaders. It can't be just the security team that is working on an audit because it impacts every department of an organization. And by the way, if you guys are currently looking to start your career in GRC, I'd recommend checking out Symposia, which basically takes you from a complete beginner, no background whatsoever in GRC and cybersecurity, and start your career as a GRC professional. As part of the program, you'll get an opportunity to complete an internship, have full career guidance and mentorship, learn and get practice on all of the most common GRC standards and security frameworks, as well as learn all the foundational knowledge you need to start your career in cybersecurity as a GRC professional. You can sign up to learn more information about Symposia and their GRC program using the link in my description. But first, I'd like to thank Keeper for sponsoring today's video. With cyber attacks grabbing headlines daily, we all know how important it is to protect our accounts, but staying secure online can be a hassle. That's where the sponsor of today's video comes in, Keeper Security. Keeper helps you create and store hyper-strong passwords, passphrases, and passkeys for all of your accounts. Keeper will autofill your credentials and even your multi-factor authentication codes so you don't have to spend your time searching for the right password or pulling out your phone for an authentication code. And Keeper doesn't just store credentials. You can also store everything from credit cards to your passport and even notes and files directly on the Keeper app. Your data is protected with military grade encryption and available on any device from your phone to your laptops and tablets. So make your life easier with Keeper and get 50% off using my code with Sandra. You can also try Keeper completely free with a 30 day free trial. Thank you again to Keeper for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to the rest of the topics. All right, number two is an IT auditor. So as I mentioned earlier, there are internal audits and there are external audits. Typically, if a company does internal audits, that means they're big enough to have an internal IT auditing or security auditing team that essentially audits certain policies, certain processes, certain teams, or entire departments based on various different criteria. One could be based on the fact that there may be a new policy or a new process that was recently implemented that the internal auditing team wants to go through before a potential external auditor comes in to do a similar audit. Essentially, the point of an internal auditing team is basically the fact that 
they want to catch anything, any issues, any gaps, anything that's falling through the cracks, anything that could be done better. They wanna do all those checks internally before an external auditor comes in and finds those same gaps because then that could make the company look bad. There could be legal or regulatory repercussions and consequences if there are certain processes or policies that affect very sensitive data or sensitive aspects of the company that may not align with industry standards and regulations. And that is exactly where IT auditors come in, specifically focuses on the technology side of auditing. This means applications, technologies, new processes, or anything that they're doing to create update, delete, purge software, data, and basically anything related to tech and IT. The exact things that you will look for as an IT auditor will differ depending on the security frameworks and regulations that you're looking to compare against. But the typical things that you'll look for are encryption, whether the application is internal or external facing, who has access to certain data, who is able to manage the application, who has admin rights, how often these admin rights are reviewed and revoked, if no longer being used, whether or not there are any DLP or data loss prevention risks, as well as of course just any gaps in controls that may be required from a compliance and auditing standpoint. IT auditors are very important to a company because not every development team or technical person or SME is going to think about, hmm, what are the GRC and compliance requirements that are required in this application that may process credit card information, for example. Not every developer or project lead is going to think about these things, and that is why IT auditors and internal auditing teams are here to fill in those gaps. But I will say, as an IT auditor, not only do you need to have relevant knowledge in the GRC space, like a compliance analyst does, but you also need the technical skills to back it up to actually test applications, to check if certain processes are missing controls, and also just to talk to developers and understand what they're actually building. This is a great role for anyone who is interested in GRC, but also wants to stay technical and use their technical skills as part of their job. All right, number three on this list is a risk analyst. As the job title alludes to, your job is to assess and analyze any potential risk that an organization may face. Again, this is gonna look very different depending on the sector that you're in, but oftentimes risk analysts, especially if you're in a bigger team or bigger company, may be focusing on different aspects of risk. For example, financial risk, third-party risk. Many risk analysts are specifically in the finance space, and one of the biggest reasons is the fact that financial regulations are one of the toughest out there to go through, and that is why so many risk analysts also work for big banks, credit card companies, anything related to money and moving people's money around. The one specific risk area I want to talk about is third-party risk. So a third-party risk analyst is specifically focused on risk that comes with working with and being supplied by third-party vendors. Some of the things that a third-party risk analyst does is to make sure that the vendors and partners that your company is working with are actually following through with certain reporting, with certain contractual obligations, that they've agreed to. As part of any vendor supplier contract, you'll also be keeping up with third-party compliance, which means whether or not your vendor is undergoing certain compliance requirements, like going through their ISO 27001 audits, or PCI, or TSACs, or any other security framework or standard, did they renew their SOC 2 type 2? And were there any new high-risk findings that you have to review internally? What were the mediations for those findings? Is the vendor keeping up with certain SLAs or service level agreements? For example, if one of your vendors had a data breach and it said in the agreement that they would contact you within 48 hours that there was a data breach that may have affected you, did they actually contact you within those 48 hours? And if not, what are the repercussions? What are the consequences? What were the impacts on your organization? All of this goes into third-party risk. It's essentially all the risks that you take on by working with third-party vendors Every company is going to work with them and it's not really something that you can avoid, but, but as a third-party risk analyst, your job is to keep track of those risks, try to mitigate them as much as possible, doing your due diligence to make sure that, that the vendors that you do work with are as secure as possible and being part of that procurement process so that when a new vendor does onboard, you have personally gone through a risk assessment to understand the risk level that vendor is going to bring to your organization. To become a risk analyst, you'll need familiarity with the most common GRC frameworks as well as risk management frameworks, understanding what a risk register is, the different types of risk mitigations. And I do think this is one of the interesting areas in cybersecurity that pertain to GRC, but also touch on the business side, since risk overall is a business issue. All right, number four on this list is a privacy analyst. This is the GRC professional who is aligned with GRC and legal. And as you can tell from this list, GRC really touches so many different areas in an organization from marketing to sales, to business, to finance. And it's honestly a really great career to go into because there's 
are so many different overlaps with other parts of the business. But for a privacy analyst, your job is to make sure that the company is compliant with data privacy laws and regulations, conducting privacy impact assessments, ensuring that the company is keeping up to date with how they process, store, encrypt, decrypt data based on the sensitivity of that data. This is another reason why data privacy is very closely aligned with legal because, for example, there may be users who want to understand how your company is using their data and may submit a request to the privacy or the legal team. For smaller companies, there may be an overlap in these two teams, and it is your job as a privacy analyst or a data privacy analyst to understand exactly how that data is being processed, is being stored, as well as how long it's being stored, and making sure that aligns with the privacy policies that you have on your website, if it's external facing, or even when it comes to internal customer information and data. For example, after your contract has ended, how long is your company still storing that data? Typically, that is going to be in the agreement that you signed with your customer. For example, if the data has to be deleted within 100 days of the customer leaving your organization, is that data actually being deleted within 100 days? And is that audited? Is that logged? Is that information stored somewhere? So when an external auditor comes in, they'll see that yes, they did align with their policies and they did delete that data within the amount of time that they said they would. And this all goes back to legal and compliance around data privacy. All right, last but not least, number five on this list is a policy analyst. This role, I would say, is probably the least technical of the five, where you're focusing specifically on researching, writing, and analyzing new policies for your organization to make sure that they're compliant with external regulations and security frameworks. This role is similar to a compliance analyst, but bigger companies will have these two silos separated out so that there is a separation of duties for those who write the policies and those who actually ensure that the company is adhering to those policies. Depending on the sector and the organization that you work for, this may or may not be required. And that is why in certain companies, there may be a compliance analyst who writes the policies and governs them aka making sure that they are being followed correctly, while there may be another company where a policy analyst is writing the policies, researching them, and making sure that they align with the regulations, while a compliance analyst is making sure that the company is following those new policies that the policy analyst is writing. This is definitely a great role for anyone who loves digging into regulatory documents, anyone who loves doing research, anyone who loves writing. A lot of regulatory policies and requirements are very wordy and lengthy, so, so this is probably the side of GRC that I personally agree can be a little bit boring depending on the role that you're interested in. But hopefully by now you guys see that there are rules in GRC that aren't that boring. Because I know in my previous video on the future of cybersecurity is GRC, a lot of you mentioned that GRC is super boring. And I will say that certain aspects of it are, but I don't think every part of GRC is as boring as it seems. All right, so that is it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. I would love to hear them. If there are any other GRC roles that are great for entry-level or early career professionals that I missed in this list, please feel free to drop them in the comments, especially if you're currently working in GRC. Let me know what you think about GRC careers after listening to this list. Hopefully there is at least one that intrigued you enough to be interested in a potential career in GRC. Don't forget to join our Discord channel, which we actually recently created a GRC channel to discuss all things GRC. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you have any other video topics you would like to see from me in the future. I post videos weekly and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!